Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have another Hammond Collection figure. This is actually the second for today, because I just acquired a whole bunch of these different Hammond Collection figures, and since I have just so much stuff here that I want to get on the channel, I figured why waste time? Might as well throw another one up today to get it out of the way. But this time we've got the Hammond Collection Velociraptor, and this one specifically I felt like was worth putting up now, because we've already had a Velociraptor, which was the Jurassic Park version. We now have the Jurassic Park 3 version, and uh, at first I had some pretty high hopes for this one, but I don't know, I've seen some images that make it not look so great, so we'll have to wait and see once we open it. But up here on the top, if I can go ahead and reposition the camera, you can see we have the Jurassic Park 30th Anniversary logo up there, so nice to see some Jurassic Park 30th Anniversary stuff begin trickling out. You can also see that we've got the Jurassic Park 3 logo here on the side with a really nice image of the Velociraptor, making it actually look way better than the figure itself, I think, does. Then the Hammond Collection here on the other side, and then, of course, we have a shot back here on the back of the figure itself as well as an image of the raptor from the film and some information on it down here so let's pop this box open and check it out and here is our velociraptor with a wonky leg currently going on let's actually try to fix that a little bit wow that's really stiff i'm actually terrified i'm gonna break it because it does not want to move but there we go our velociraptor wearing boots is now here before us and I mean, it's it's definitely not that great, and in fact, mine specifically, I think, looks even a little worse than some of the others that I had seen prior to this, but uh, it's nowhere near as nice as the Amber Collection version was, and it suffers from pretty much the same stuff that the Jurassic Park Velociraptor did, and the worst thing of all is those feet those feet are gigantic and yes i've heard people defend it saying that you know it needs the larger feet for stability issues which that's not necessarily true i've actually seen replacement feet from both rods random work and marco makes where they gave it accurately sized feet which it stands perfectly fine with those feet so we don't actually need the larger feet and being that this is more of an adult based collector's line i feel like the larger feet are pretty ridiculous and we definitely could do without them and on top of that, the tail's a bit too short, and the paint scheme itself is a little lackluster when it comes to giving us, again, a attempt, at least, at an accurate rendition of a Jurassic Park 3 Velociraptor. So there's definitely a good bit wrong with this one, and uh, it's not near as nice as I was kind of hoping, not as nice as I thought it was going to be from the initial images I had seen of it. That being said, it's obviously not the worst thing in the world because it's a Jurassic Park 3 Velociraptor, so, I mean, it couldn't be terrible, I guess. So let's go ahead and jump straight to a closer look at it right now. So starting up here at the head sculpt of the Velociraptor, you can see that even though the head sculpt isn't exactly screen accurate, they did make an attempt to kind of make it more screen accurate than the Velociraptor from Jurassic Park, which that head sculpt was more of a Velociraptor blue head sculpt, which is humorous because we haven't even had a Velociraptor blue in the Hammond collection line yet. But you can see again that we actually do have at least the crest and stuff for the raptor, similar to the way that we see it portrayed in Jurassic Park 3. We also have the quills up here on the back of the head, which is a huge plus for the figure. The head sculpt itself is decent looking. Again, if you actually look at it in comparison to the more recent rendition from Marco Makes, where he had kind of corrected the head sculpt, you'll see the differences between this and what an accurate head sculpt should look like for this Velociraptor, but I will say that this one again isn't far off, so it's definitely way nicer than what we see on the Jurassic Park Velociraptor. We do have a grayish tone for the majority of the face, we also have some blue there around the eye, a little red up there, more like a red orange on the crest, and you can see some of the kind of lighter yellowish brown tones leading up from the lower jaw there, kind of uh, designing up into the face a little bit, kind of mixed actually with a little bit of white in those areas. And uh, it's sort of like the gist of what a Jurassic Park 3 Velociraptor looks like, but again, it's not perfect. But I really don't expect super highly detailed paint jobs from these figures. I would love to see that, especially if we could get paint jobs like if NECA had a Jurassic Park license. I feel like the paint jobs would be pretty incredible, so I always kind of wanted to see paint jobs similar to what I would envision if NECA had a license from the Hammond collection, or at least that's what I was hoping for when they had initially announced the Hammond collection. But unfortunately, again, it's more like a toy style paint job for what is supposed to be an adult collectible, which isn't the end of the world, but you know, it would be nice to have a little bit more 
paint actually added to it but with that being said and speaking of paint we do actually have painted nails for the fingers so that is at least a pretty big plus definitely nice to see paint on the nails it makes a huge difference honestly as far as the figure goes i think but the pachycephalosaurus i had reviewed earlier did not have painted nails so it is nice to see that the velociraptor does as you move back away from the head again you can see that that white stripe picks up and runs down the course of the neck of the raptor the neck's not perfectly placed it looks like so the white stripe isn't really lining up so for it all to line up it looks like we have to have a slight turn in the neck for everything to line up perfectly but you can see that the actual quills up here on the top of the head and everything look pretty fun they do have that kind of if my camera would stay focused on it but they do have that kind of like striping look through it as far as that white coloration goes and then moving down through the course of the neck you can see we definitely have some nice texturing to the skin we also have that kind of yellowish brown tone here for the underside of the neck the white stripe continues to move down the course of the velociraptor we have the arms sculpted out pretty nicely again all just that grayish tone we see that grayish tone run through the course of the raptor again transitioning to that yellowish tone for the underside really nice looking skin texture as well throughout they definitely did a very good job on the fine detail of the figure even though it definitely has some proportion issues and accuracy issues the actual fine detail does look quite nice you can see the hip bone and everything a little bit right there the spinal column nicely running along the back i would not be at all surprised if this were the exact same body as the jurassic park velociraptor and probably i'm thinking it most definitely is because that's exactly what they did with the amber collection where they just kind of kept reusing the same body and obviously repainted it so there's a very good chance that this is the same body as that raptor but you can see moving down here into the thigh we kind of have the gray and yellow where they kind of stripe and design back and forth there and that looks pretty nice again not exactly perfect what a jurassic park 3 velociraptor looks like but it still looks pretty cool definitely gives it a little hint of flashiness as you move down the course of the leg this is one problem that i have with the raptor is how insanely thin and ill looking the legs are on the raptor now of course they do have thin legs but like not this bad it just looks weird on this raptor it looked weird on the jurassic park one definitely looks weird on this one and it gets even weirder as you continue to move down to the supersized feet it looks like we basically took a uh, foot sculpt from a larger scale raptor and put it on a hammond collection version there that large we do have a little hint of like a almost like a magenta here on the back of the legs rather than on the underside of the feet and uh, again we do have painted nails which is a plus we have a nice gloss coat for the nails on both the hands and the feet which is also again a pretty big plus for the figure and uh the dew claws there but unfortunately as always no paint work but as you move up you can see that the yellowish tone actually does continue through the groin which is nice to see runs out onto the tail but diminishes as we get out here onto the tail now of course i really would have preferred to see that paint run the entire way out but it's actually pretty nice that they did go this far so that i think does make a pretty big difference as opposed to you know ending it up here like they did with the pachycephalosaurus it definitely looks nicer having it run that far out and the white stripe continues to run through the course of the body as well leading out into the tail before diminishing as we lead out we do have a coloration here for the tip of the tail that's similar to what we saw on the back of the legs kind of like that magenta like tone randomly out here on the tip of the tail it would have been nice to see that kind of like reddish tone running along the top of the back of the raptor as well but they didn't do that just that one little bit of extra paintwork i think would have made a nice you know bit of a difference for the appeal factor of the figure let's see if we can match that up so the tail coloration is really really off so if we have it if we try to line it up where it's gonna land correctly so if we do it over here where it almost looks actually right there if we try to line it up and now we come over here look at how far up that yellowish coloration is it's almost touching that white stripe and if we line the stripes up you can see that it just doesn't line up on either side so that's definitely some sloppiness as far as the actual consistency of the paintwork goes so a little bit of a downside for that one but again we're already well aware of the fact that the raptors have larger feet on the hammond collection version so it's not like this is a shocking big surprise to me coming into this one but I will say the paintwork is definitely a bit sloppier than I was expecting it to be, even with those like yellowish tones leading up there into the face where they kind of like stripe up into the face a little bit. It's really quite sloppy. You can also see the eye is painted horribly on this side. It's really 
quite misplaced. The blue doesn't look that good either. So as a whole, I would say this is probably the sloppiest Hammond Collection figure that I have acquired so far, but I don't know if I would say it's less appealing than the Jurassic Park Velociraptor. I still think I like this one a little better. Might as well go ahead and show off the articulation while we're up here. You can see we do have the articulated jaw, and we also have a nice pinkish tone, a darker pinkish tone there for the inside of the mouth. We can see the teeth are sculpted and painted quite nicely, which is a plus because with my uh, original Jurassic Park Raptor, it had some crazy stuff going on on the inside of the mouth of that one. This one looks a lot better. The jaw is also really smooth. We have articulation in the neck right here which can swivel and can also move up and down which gives us some really nice poseability for the raptor that is definitely some nice articulation similar just like the pachycephalosaurus actually and then you can see for the lower part of the neck you can move that up move that down also swivel the neck around so you've got some more nice articulation again allowing a lot of poseability possibilities in the neck region you also have the arm forward and back also out away from the body, same deal with the elbow, forward and back, and swivel, you can swivel the elbow as well. Then you've got the hip, forward and back, the knee as well, which unlike my pachycephalosaurus is moving, that can also swivel, and then you have the articulation of the ankle, which can swivel, go forward, back up, down. So this one's really stiff actually, we'll show you on this side, so you can see how it can go up, down, swivel. That side definitely needs to be heated up or something. And then you have the tail here, you've got a nice little spot where you can kind of turn it, swivel it, all of that fun stuff. And then, of course, the bendable wire tail on top of everything. So, it does have fun articulation. The paint's definitely sloppier than I was hoping for, and overall, it's definitely not the best Hammond Collection figure that we've had. But I guess it's all right. As far as a size goes for the Velociraptor, it's going to fall right in the same size range as the Jurassic Park one. You're looking at about seven and three quarter inches or around 19 and a half centimeters in length for a height. About three and a half inches, maybe a hair over or around nine centimeters. Also, maybe a hair over for a size comparison. There is the Jurassic Park 3 Velociraptor next to the Papo T Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line as well. And you can see again that it's pretty much exactly in the size range you would expect it to be. I don't think we need many comparisons this time around because if the original Raptor is something you are familiar with, We'll just go ahead and give you a comparison with that one, which you can now see these Raptors are pretty much exactly the same size. Like there's no real difference between the two and they are absolutely the same sculpt as far as the body goes. You could see it just looking at them. Nothing is different outside of the head area. Potentially the neck might be a little different, but even that I think looks to be the same. So almost an entirely repainted figure rather than re-sculpted figure obviously the head sculpt's a bit different to give us that Jurassic Park 3 look but overall again it is a very very similar figure to the original Jurassic Park Raptor so this Hammond Collection Jurassic Park 3 Velociraptor is definitely fun I will give it that because I love the Jurassic Park 3 Raptors they are very near and dear to my heart I've always been a big fan of those Raptors especially the male with the quills on the head and everything when I was younger I always thought that was just the coolest thing but but the figure itself from Mattel here for the Hammond collection is definitely sloppy as far as the paint work. You know, it's got really sloppy paint. The white doesn't really look like body color. It kind of just looks like paint on the figure. The paint around the eye doesn't look that great. The actual eye paint itself is a little bit sloppy. Not too bad on my left eye, but really quite sloppy on the right. The coloration where it kind of stripes up from the underside of the lower jaw into the upper part of the head is a little sloppy. The transition doesn't look quite right. And on top of that, we have the coloration out there on the tail where it just doesn't match up no matter which way you position it. The white stripe either isn't going to match up or the yellow of the underside isn't going to match up. One way or another, that coloration is not going to work right. But the Sculpt overall is pretty much exactly what I expected it to be. Again, we have the supersized feet for the figure, the shorter tail, and just generally a weird look for the figure. The legs moving down look like they've honestly been cooked for about four hours longer than they should have because they're just like super thin and just don't look very good. 
So again, it is full of downsides overall, but it is still a Jurassic Park 3 Velociraptor. It's not like a lot of this stuff is a surprise coming into it. Again, we saw it all on the original Jurassic Park Raptors, so we knew this was going to be kind of given those same issues. I do not expect Mattel to actually change that or switch that up as far as the size of the feet or the length of the tail. None of that stuff will probably be corrected, but the figure is still, again, a Jurassic Park 3 Velociraptor loaded with pretty fun articulation, so it does have that going for it. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's definitely nowhere near the best Hammond Collection figure we've seen. But if you are interested in picking this up, I will include a link in the description to where I purchased mine on Big Bad Toy Store. It doesn't seem to be in stock currently, or it may not be. I mean, you know, never know when they're going to restock stuff. So check the link in the description if it's not in stock now. Keep checking back. Hopefully it'll pop back into stock at some point very soon. And make sure you pick this up when it does. And also like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.